Uh, for today, I was thinking of doing a little bit of a bonus uh, video, just a short um, two-page story that I wrote a couple of years ago. It's called Obau uh, no Sekai, A World Which Has Ended. It's um, just a short story, like I said, and well, I don't want to just tell too much about it, just I want to first tell the story and then we can talk about it a bit more, about what it actually means. This is a world which has ended. The girl extends her arm as though inviting some invisible spirit to join her. Inside this room, there is only a wooden table with a single chair. Her hand indicates both pieces of furniture. This building is old, with no signs of its original function remaining. She remains quiet for a moment, then speaks again, more subdued. It was empty like now when I awoke here in this place. She turns towards the large window behind her. Outside the window of this room, I can see only wasteland lit by a dim sky. Only silence lurks between the buildings of the city, a city deserted by its people. Whenever I go outside the room, I walk through empty streets, watched upon by the empty eyes of deserted buildings. There are no friends in this world, no enemies either. There is nothing left but the last memories of existence. The dim luminance, invaded by these drops of pure light, may slowly descend to the ground like tears from the skies. The girl moves to arrange a pile of seemingly random parts from various mechanical and electronic devices which are lying on the table. Her slender, pale hand caresses some of them. As she moves her head forward, a bit of her blonde hair falls around her face. Why I'm here in this world, I do not know. I do not even remember the people who once lived in this city. It's as though I'm a ghost trapped forever in the last illusion of life. Yet I have not a single memory of this place, this city, this room. It often makes me wonder whether any of this is real, if anything can ever be defined as such. Her gaze wanders about the room. Suddenly a hint of a smell plays around the corners of her mouth. How long have I been here? I don't know. There are no days or nights, no timepieces indicating any flow of time. I only know that I've always been alone. The girl focuses again on the parts which are lying on the table. Reaching for a particular component, she lifts it between a thumb and finger and holds it up for a moment, then reaches forward, as though placing the component somewhere. Suddenly I can see where she placed the component. It's a collection of parts, assembled in such a way as to roughly resemble a humanoid figure the size of a small child, only without, uh, without any of the allergens. Its eyes, or at least the non-symmetric parts resembling eyes, look straight ahead, without any thought behind them. None of its limbs show any sign of movement, as it stands there on the bare, wooden floor. Curiously, the girl picks up another part from the pile and inserts it somewhere in the head portion of the figure. Using a crudely shaped screwdriver from a collection of tools lying elsewhere on the table, she seems to turn something inside the head section until a sudden click can be heard. Satisfied, she puts away the screwdriver and squats down in front of the figure. Now, can you move? She says in a voice which suggests that she fully expects the figure to do exactly that. A sudden flash of pity? I don't remember feeling anything before. Before I can think of anything else, however, I feel that something has changed. It's not the room, the girl or the figure. A sudden thought flashes through me of how nice it will be if that figure could really move and be a companion of some sort to the girl. Almost immediately, the crudely formed left arm of the figure moves forward by a small amount. Intrigued, I explore some more and suddenly find myself looking through the eyes of the figure as though I've been sucked into its head. I can also see the room from outside the figure, which is confusing. The figure's body feels clumsy, at least as much of a mismatch of parts as it appears, but it feels sturdy. It does, however, seem to lack a mouth. The girl, 
seeing the figure, my arm moves excitedly, claps her hands, smiling happily. I do not remember how long after that moment we spent together in that room, with her talking about other experiences, things she had seen, theories, and everything else it seemed seemingly could cut up with, and me listening to her every word, occasionally moving one of my arms as to indicate something, or at least to attempt to do so. It is hard to communicate when one's body is a nearly random gathering of mismatched parts, yet things still feel right. I wonder where you are, she suddenly says, after finishing an early line of thought. I haven't met anyone in this entire world, I was left of it, and yet you are here. I respond by moving my arms to and from, as to indicate that I do not know the answer either. I wish I could tell her that I do not remember anything other than this room, but I think she somehow understands. Startled, I suddenly notice that she has leaped up to her feet from her previous sitting position. She smiles and says while looking at me, I know, let me show the outside world, I'm a favorite place. I move my left arm. Still smiling, she takes a hold of my left hand, and together we walk out of the door towards the outside, which I've only glimpsed before via the window. As it turns out, the world outside the room is even more impressive than I could have imagined. The light has a yellowish golden tint to it, like that of a sunset. What's a sunset, I think, making everything look even darker. Abandoned, ruinous buildings line the streets which we traverse. Yet it is hard to tell whether anything but time caused them to look like this. Small sparks of light gently flow down from the sky above us, disappearing the moment they reach the ground. After what seems like an eternity, if such a thing is possible in this timeless place, we arrive at what must be the limit of the city. A landscape formed by countless hills, covered with long, green-golden grass. A gentle breeze stirs the grass like the waves on a lake. As we reach the top of one hill, the girl stops and lets go of my hand. She turns around to look at the infinite golden hills around her and closes her eyes as the breeze caresses her face. As I watch her, I suddenly realize that eternity as a word, can have many meanings as an intense feeling of peace descends upon me. And that's the end of uh, this story. It's uh, one of stories that got inspired by uh, an anime series. There's some scene in it. It's one of the stories that stick with you, one of those uh, couple of scenes and you just want to write something about it and this whole this feeling of um, there is this world and it's basically this world has ended like there are no people left in it it, it had, doesn't have a future it, this is just like the last microsecond of this world before it's it all finished but there is still in this eternity so someone could exist and this will be their life and this other person in there, well, it's probably you as a reader. This is also an interesting thought, just by reading the story, by you are there, you are part of the story, and you've been given a body, and you, that's how you become part of the story. So, it's probably not a story that means uh, too much. It's more of one of those... Uh, well, <laughs> slice of life kind of moments, just uh, not the usual way. So, yeah, I hope you liked it. It's, uh, it's just a small little glimpse into a world you probably will never experience. <laughs> for real, I hope. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to like, subscribe and all those things. Until next time.